Israel's army ordering tens of thousands of people in the southern Gaza city of Rafah to evacuate from the area. Israel has said it needs to in, uh, evade, invade in order to defeat Hamas. Yesterday, Hamas fired rockets from near Rafah, killing three Israeli soldiers and attacking Israel's main entry point into Gaza for humanitarian aid. Uh, here in the U.S., tensions still high on college campuses. Among the latest flashpoints, police cleared a pro-Palestinian encampment at USC over the weekend. And joining us to try to make sense of all of this is Dan Senior, former uh, foreign policy advisor to the Bush administration. He's the co-author of The Genius of Israel and host of the podcast, Call Me Back. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, guys. Should we talk? Let's talk about first about what's happening uh, in Rafa or what's sure. about to happen in Rafa. Yeah. And what you think the implications of uh, an effort in Rafa mean for the public perception of Israel and also its security. So the Israeli leadership is not terribly concerned about the public perception of Israel right now. They're concerned with eliminating the threat of Hamas. There's still four Hamas battalions sitting there in Rafa. The Hamas leadership is likely in, in Rafa. There are a lot of hostages likely in Rafa. The Israeli consensus, I was just in Israel, I was struck by this, from right to left, where most Israelis are, is this war cannot end until the threat of Hamas is removed. So these crazy kids taking over college campuses right. are unnerving and quite depressing, actually, to watch from afar. But they can't let that affect what they need to do in Rafa. And they have found that over the basically since the middle of March, Israel's been pulling back. They removed most of their ground forces. They've been engaging in hostage negotiations. They have not been putting uh, right. military pressure on Hamas. And right now, there are, there's no resolution. Right. There are no hostage negotiations. What exists of hostage negotiations feel on the cusp of collapse. Right. So they feel that they've gotten nothing for it, including, the, and they've been under more pressure right. here. So they're saying, we, we, we lose no matter what. Let's finish right. the operation. What do you make of the argument? And it's, and it's one of the arguments made on campus, and I think it's one of the arguments made uh, by the Biden administration that's putting some pressure on Netanyahu, that it is almost impossible to eliminate Hamas. And that, in fact, this is... that that these efforts are creating additional members of Hamas, if you will. Yeah, this is uh, an argument that the administration made to the Israeli leadership from the beginning, that you can't eliminate an idea. Hamas is an idea, and there's always going to be young Palestinians that are going to be susceptible, susceptible to radicalization, and you're just radicalizing more of them. That may or may not be true, but one thing that um, Hamas can do is use territory upon which to wage war and use territory to terrorize Jews. And when you remove the, their capacity to have a home base and build a military infrastructure where they had 350 plus tunnels, still do, they're able to bring in all these military capabilities unchecked and launch operations from Gaza. When you remove that base of operations, you don't eliminate Hamas as an idea. You do substantially reduce the impact of the threat. Much like you could have made the same argument about the U.S. against ISIS, right? right. Now, are there still jihadis running around the world? Yes. Does that mean the U.S. should not have confronted uh, ISIS in Iraq and Syria, of course, because we removed their base of operations. There are still right. white supremacists and Nazi sympathizers around the world. They're waving right. tiki torches in, you know, Charlottesville. They got a Bed Bath and Beyond. They don't right. have Germany right. upon which but, to yeah, wreak havoc. The, the other side at at Charlottesville that were supposedly pushing back against anti-Semitism are probably a lot of the people that are on the college campuses right now. That are talking about. I look. I find it uh, like they're I the said, same people. They're Antifa. They're yeah. They're, I they're what is what is what is so professional. What is so frustrating to me yeah. is I actually understood the outrage against what happened in Charlottesville in 2017. Absolutely. Of course, but there there were bad people. And I many don't know if and, were, and, and many of the people, people and many of the sides. people who were criticizing. What happened? Joe Biden said one of the reasons he ran for president is right. because of what he saw at Charlottesville. Right. And many of those voices today are, at best, silent about what's happening on college campuses. Right. At worst, they're providing cover and expressing sympathy and solidarity See, with this I, I would activist. Say, I don't say there's good people on both sides. I say there were bad people on both sides yeah. of, of right. Charlottesville. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask you this. So do you think at this point that Biden or Chuck Schumer, are they talking the talk or what? Now I see some ammo might not go to Israel. So I, it's fine for Biden to pretend that it's they're with both sidisms, which is, mm -hmm. I've seen him say that. I saw yeah. him say, uh, there's people that don't understand the, the, what Israel's doing, there's people that don't understand the Palestinian. You know, he, he did a, a both sides yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Is that real? 
or, or, or is it, does he have to say it to try to win Michigan? Or what, what's really behind I it? Think and the, Schumer, yeah, what well, was that? Okay, okay, so let's, let's break those Make apart. First of all, I think the administration has a two-pronged strategy. On the one hand, they have been more or less providing Israel with the supplies to fight this war. There are these reports that you're referring to that they're holding back some munitions. It's, the, the administration has not confirmed that. There are a lot of reporters trying to figure out if that's actually true, if that decision was made, at what level in the bureaucracy was made. Did it go up to the president? So we don't know that yet. So until we know that, let's just say, on balance, they've been providing Israel with the munitions they need to fight yeah. the war. That's the good news. The bad news is the other prong of their strategy is publicly pressuring Israel publicly pressuring Israel at the U.N. by greenlighting that U.N. Security Council yeah. resolution, that bad resolution that passed in March, the Schumer speech, which the administration knew about. It was a way to pressure the Israeli government to reduce military pressure. And pre the President Biden's right. State of the Union address. And the problem with this strategy is they're giving Israel the weapons they need. At the same time, they're pressuring Israel publicly. <laughs> Sinwar, Yechia Sinwar, who's the leader of Hamas, is sitting there watching, why do I need to cut a deal with Israel right now? Pressure is mounting on Israel. Right. I separately want to ask you about the college campuses, but I want to put it in the corporate context, if you will. And guys in the control room, if we could get uh, hims and hers and put mm. the stock up. I don't know if you've followed the uh, CEO yeah. of hims and hers, yeah. uh, but the CEO of hims and hers took to Twitter and said, moral courage greater than college degree. If you're currently protesting against the genocide of Palestine people and for your university's divestment from Israel, keep going. It's working. There are plenty of companies and CEO, CEOs eager to hire you regardless of university discipline. Effectively, he says that he wants to hire them. The stock, by the way, up this morning, but took a, uh, took a tumble on Friday. What do you make of that? I think it is highly irresponsible for leaders in our society at elite high schools, uh, at private schools that we're seeing it, you're seeing it at elite college campuses, and in some aspects of corporate America, to get into the activism business, encouraging, fomenting activism among young people. I think it is going to backfire. It is certainly backfiring on American college campuses right now. It's creating, it's a catastrophe for the, for the administrations of these universities. And I think companies that engage in this are playing with fire. Google just had to fire something like 30 employees who decided that they were going to protest right. Google doing business with the Israeli this government. This company is ready to hire them. I, exactly. My, let, com, corporate corporations and universities should not, they've been like, they've been um, uh, playing with the dials to get these activist students. They want them, and I think it is, it is like, blowing up in people's faces. Do you think the federal government should defund the universities? I, I don't think they should defund all the universities, but I do think they should use the lever of federal funding as it relates to research and other areas for universities that are fomenting and engaging in incitement of violence. I mean, w this is not subtle political activism. Right? They are using language on college campuses like kill the Jews or telling, we're putting up signs saying Hamas, your next target, and pointing at students, or globalize the intifada, which is basically a signal to use military right. you know, response against students. This is what's happening on campuses, and the administrations in many cases are not doing anything about it, and the professors are expressing solidarity. I, I want to say one thing as it relates to this. Today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Today is Yom HaShoah. At 10, in the 10 o'clock hour in Israel this morning, the whole country stopped for two minutes while there were sirens, where the whole country just takes this moment of silence. Right now, right in the, at this moment, there is a guy named Alex Danzig from Kibbutz Nir Oz. Kibbutz Nir Oz were one of four residents who were either killed or taken hostage. He is sitting in a dungeon in Gaza. He's been there for over 200 days. He was born by Holocaust survivors in 1948 in Warsaw. He moved to Israel. He made his life there. His family are, are Holocaust survivors. And he's now being held hostage by people who use the same rhetoric and have the same ideology as the Nazis. And that's what's being celebrated on these campuses. Right now, there's a day of rage being organized. You'll, you'll see it promoted, where people are going to stand up, and, including here in New York City, against uh, businesses here in New York City, against Jewish-owned businesses. It's the language of Kristallnacht. It's the language of Nazism, and it's here and now. And so this idea that universities and the federal government, sorry, the idea that the federal government shouldn't take action against universities and CEOs of companies shouldn't think twice about the rhetoric they use, they are playing with fire. It is a very scary time.